everyone, welcome back to the Twisted ADV channel. My name's Chris, and we're back in the shop to do a quick install of the Metal Cloak Overland Fender. Now behind me you see the Jeep, and it's still got the stock uh, flares on there, and I don't know if you've ever had this problem, but we were going down the trail one day, and I had a couple guys in the Jeep, and we were hitting some, some not so bad ruts, no, no, nothing too crazy, but I got a little flexing, maybe a little extra weight in the back, and, and I kept hearing some banging and clanking around, didn't think too much of it. Then we started going down the highway, and I look in my side mirror, and man, flap, flap, flap. My rear fenders were about to fall right off. They were flapping so bad because those plastic clips had actually broken. And that 37 inch tire stuffed up in there, it actually had popped it uh, and busted them. So, started looking at some of our solutions, and a, even with the four and a half inch lift, it's best to just go ahead and get some of these flat fenders and there's no better company out there than Metal Cloak when it comes to uh, quality, when it comes to sturdiness, when it comes to overall strength. Uh, the ones I have here are a powder coated black. They're the Overland series and they're aluminum. They do have a steel option, uh, but with the lighter aluminum, I save the weight. I won't have to worry about the rust. When it comes to doing the install, I can probably handle it myself. So I've got my tools, got my instructions printed off, and I think we're all set, so let's go ahead and jump on into the install and get this knocked out. All right, so I think we're about ready to get started on this. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect the light here, and then we're also gonna go ahead and remove the fender liner. Now this one is an Ace Engineering fender liner. Uh, you may have the stock, which is gonna require a few bolts to undo, 10 millimeter, and then using your handy dandy tool to pull all the pins that are holding everything in place. All right, light's disconnected. Let's go ahead and start with the panel. All right, so now that we have all the bolts removed for the inner liner and then the light removed, we should just be able to pull the, the uh, fender itself, it's gonna pop some of those clips. Uh, you can try to use your panel puller if you need, um, but they're just gonna break. We're not reusing them, so it's okay. All right, so my fender liner is actually tucked up underneath the plastic liner that, that lines the uh, stock fender. So when we yank this thing, we start busting clips, I suspect this is probably gonna fall down. So uh, prepare for a little bit of a crash, but hey, it's something we gotta do. Okay, so make sure that you pull your light. It's got a little Christmas tree type of thing, peg. Make sure you pull that out before we go start yanking on this. Now I do have the Quadratech pre-runner light kit, so that's why you see the, the actual, actual wire harness there. Otherwise, you would just have a standard uh, plug right for the light. So let's go ahead and yank, see what happens. All right, so now that we got the fender off and the liner out of there, um, and to clean this up just a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and take the inner bracket and slide it up in there, and all this is is for alignment purposes. So we're just going to take it and throw it up in there. All right. As close to the holes as possible. And we're going to install the stock hardware that was underneath holding the liner in the previous fender. And we're just gonna throw that up in there. And this is so we can get ready to mark our holes for the new fender. We're gonna have to drill some of that out. This is just a finger tighten. It's just to kind of hold it in place so it doesn't uh, go rocking around, okay? All right, so now we have the fender in place. 
installed a few of the stock bolts. We didn't put the washers and nuts on the back of them. Just put them in the holes just to give us a somewhat of an alignment. And then I put some painter's tape underneath on the back side there. We're gonna go ahead and you can either take a Sharpie or you can uh, do a hole punch and uh, go ahead and start marking your holes. All right, now that we got our holes marked, we can go ahead and remove our placeholders here and then get ready to, uh, to drill. All right, so now that we have our holes marked and taped up and center punched, we'll go ahead and remove the inner bracket and then uh, we'll get ready to drill these holes out. Now what you should use is a 1 8 drill bit and then work yourself up to the half bit. That way we don't uh, walk on any of the holes and we get a good, nice, straight hole. Okay, go ahead and move the inner bracket, get that out of the way, and then we'll go ahead and start drilling. Now before we drill out the remaining stock holes here, uh, I like to go ahead and take my step bit and then I mark it off with the tape so I know exactly where to stop to get that uh, 7 16th mark. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the standoff and we're gonna put it in place there as a sleeve. And that helps when we take the 7 16 drill bit that when we actually try to drill a hole through here, it's not gonna pull that sheet metal in. So now that we have all our holes drilled, uh, we went with the half on the sides here, and in the front six we went with 7 16 according to the instructions. We'll go ahead and put our bracket in. Uh, we're going to take the uh, mounting hardware off of the stock item there for the, uh, the bracket there, and we'll go ahead and start getting this lined up. Add a little anti-seize to the hardware. Go ahead and try to get it good in. Now getting these Allen button heads started can be a little bit of a challenge. What I found is use a little block of wood to help support, give you a little extra set of hands. Uh, get these lined up, make sure you use your anti-seize so that way um, none of the threads um, lock up on in if you ever needed to uh, 
remove these later on. But uh, other than that, this is a pretty simple part of the process. Just get them nice and tight and work all the way around. Okay, so now at least we have the fender up and uh, we'll go around and tighten all these up. But right now it's a little loose and we're gonna go ahead and put our fender liner back in place. Okay, so now we're going to connect the metal cloak light to the factory side marker lights. Now, I do have the uh, LED pre-runner kit, um, so it has a tap-in harness. So I'm just going to go ahead and tap in right here. We'll con disconnect those and uh, put on our inserts and then connect it into the line. All right, now that we've got the first one put on there, we've got the light ram, we got the inner liner fender put back in there, we've got all the brace supports. It, it, it was kind of difficult just trying to get that in there lined up with that bracket. There was a lot of shifting and moving, just getting things set just perfectly. Uh, but then once we got it lined up, it, hey, it all bolted in pretty nice. It's super sturdy. It's not going anywhere. Really happy with the way it looks. Let's go ahead and jump on the back. All right, so just like before with the front, uh, the rear fender is going to be held on with a bunch of these, these clips all along the inside fender. Now, mine do not have the inside liner. I'd already taken that out a while back, and uh, so I don't have to remove that. Um, so all we're going to have to worry about is removing these clips. You can either use your tool here and start trying to pop them loose as you go around, or you can just give them a good yank, and then it should pop. Now that we got that removed, we can go ahead and take any of the remaining clips that are still in place, either with a needle nose plier or with your handy dandy tool. Now that we got that rear fender off, we'll go ahead and kind of clean up the area a little bit and get ready to prep. Uh, for the install of the rear fender. So we'll get some painter's tape and we'll put it on there so that we can help start marking some of our holes and getting things ready as we're gonna be doing some drilling to either expand the holes, stock holes that are already there or drill new ones and then start adding in the nut threads. Okay, now that we'll go ahead and get ready to start lining up, we're just gonna put some painter's tape here. To try to get ready to mark that hole and we'll put some on the other side. Somewhere around here. All right, now that we have the uh, tape in place, we'll go ahead and put the fender up. Line up some of those button heads and start threading them through as many of the stock holes as possible. Again, this is for only, only for alignment. Go ahead and center punch and mark our drill out location. Okay, now that we got the holes marked, we can go ahead and remove the fender so we can start to drill.
add a little anise and then thread in the bowl. Just make sure that you put the anti-seize on all of the bolts as you run them in. And then these top two right here, right at the top center of the uh, fender, that's just going to be a washer and a locking nut on the back, finishing up with your blind holes and tightening them up. And then running a one quarter drill with washer and nut on the rear. All right guys, that wraps up another install video here on the Twisted ADV channel. And man, I tell you what, those metal cloak fenders, they just look great. They added a whole lot of strength. That bracket up for the front fenders, uh, the rear fenders with the nut certs. I would definitely suggest maybe looking into getting the tool, but I really didn't have much of a problem using, uh, using what they provided from metal cloak. The only thing I would suggest is maybe adding a little silicone every so often on the bolt. Let it cool down a little bit as you're driving them in because there's quite a few that you have to punch through in there but hey overall the installation instructions were great the support from metal cloak team was awesome the shipping the packing the protection that was provided i even got stickers and i hey metal cloak banner for the front of the jeep it's 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 just going to be awesome i'm totally excited about being able to hit the trails and not be so worried or concerned about how much I'm flexing or what kind of dip or incline that I'm getting into. So that way when those tires stuff up there and I'm not, I'm not busting my clips and having fenders flapping in them as I'm going down the highway. Totally excited about that. The functionality, the strength, the powder coating, just top notch. I'm really excited. I have some more Metal Cloak products that are on their way. So stay tuned to the channel. I've got more coming. Click that like and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next time. Thanks guys.